对吗？对吗？哦。So here we are for part two, sharing the love, to um, share the love. To share the love. Um. So last video we made with Kika was a month ago. And so now we felt to check in and share how things have been going for her and uh, what's present and uh, <laughs> what's been going on and how she feels. and. Uh, um, bring us up to speed. So, um, uh, here I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know for how long I've been here, but it feels like a lifetime. And at the same time, it feels like I just got here. Mm -hmm. My sense of space and time is uh, collapsing, actually, <laughs> crashing more and more as I'm moving into just completely different way of operating. And how, how is that? that how you, are you operating with the collapse of space-time? You find yourself being more intuitive and spontaneous? Exactly. So I have dropped any sense of doership, any sense of feeling like I need to do something and surrendering to each moment as it comes. So every second, every moment, just letting go of what happened even two seconds ago and just being here and Fre seeing fresh. exactly. So like blank page each moment, not just blank page, like each morning when I wake up, but each moment. And that completely takes away, yeah, any conditionings or any, um, yeah, projections of should, could, would. Yeah, of what needs to happen or what I think I should do. It's Any like kind of plan. Yeah, it's even like I want to give an example. So, for example, I have a feeling that um, I want to go to the kitchen and um, take something to eat, and then I wait for the impulse. Like, what did my body actually get up to to do it? And suddenly, yeah, my body actually lifts up to do it. But, but again, I let it go, and maybe. Then, when I actually go to the kitchen, I actually take something else. Uh, so yeah, it's like really showing me that, yeah, just letting go actually each moment, not just like waiting for, for the impulse, like waiting, like letting go again and again and again and again and again. And then, yeah, being fully aligned with what each moment wants to bring, in, bring into my reality. And do you find that uh, new way of operating uh, less stressful, more harmonious? <laughs> and the choices you're making more nourishing and wow. to use a word enlightened for sure <sighs> yeah i feel that being in that kind of flow it's taking off any con taking away all the contraction and i just feel like i am yeah in the flow of love and the flow of light and really feeling how yeah, being so aligned each moment is just, um, yeah, it just doesn't bring any contraction in my body. I just feel so light all the time. I just feel so in flow. And also, obviously, seeing how w when I'm being in that flow, the choices that I, I do make are obviously for my highest good and the highest good of all. And it's just super harmonious and makes my body feel great and just makes my whole being feel so wonderful and yeah and really in flow really in full alignment more and more each day more and more each day i can i can really surrender to this and and trust and where is this flow like what is the mm, what is the essence of this flow like you said the flow of love or is it the flow of Shakti? Oh. Or is it the flow of your higher self? Or is it, you know, uh, intuition? Um, yeah, can you, let's dive a little deeper into what is, what are the qualities of this flow and where is this flow? Where is oh. the origin of this flow? Oh. Great question. So this flow 
It feels like so it's a kundalini energy and kundalini energy is the divine itself or it's love or it's god goddess kali shakti whatever way people relate to that so, so to the, me the, the kundalini uh love <laughs> is expressing through you and not just guiding your choices, but it's, uh, can we say that subject and object guide and guided, uh, intuited and done doer mm. are starting to collapse. So the same energy that's guiding you to make the choice that you're making is also doing the choosing and is also the thing you're choosing. <laughs> so what I've noticed is, like I, in your example, I'm guided to go to the kitchen. Then I go to the kitchen, like spontaneously I find myself in the kitchen. And then I'm in the kitchen, and then it's like I get a inspiration, like uh, make this. Yeah. And then I act on that inspiration, and then the thing that I make is like other dimensional. It can be the same dish yeah. I've had a thousand times, but the energy in the dish that I make exactly. is so satisfying, <laughs> so joyful, exactly. and so miraculous, even if it's the same dish I've had a million times, every time it's like, wow. Because what I discovered was, I'm answering my own question. Yes, great. What I discovered was <laughs> that Guidance, guide, subject, object, it's all one. Um. And that's my experience. So as long as I was like in the flow of love when that was made, then it also reflects that when I'm eating it. And then that is the most nourishing thing possible no matter what it is, because it's not the guide, the guidance, and the thing guided to are all the same love. So when you're in the flow of love, also the uh, results, if you want to use that word, of the guide, guidance, and being guided are miraculous, miraculous. Are, are other dimensional. Yeah. So it can be something so simple, and it'll be like the best thing you've ever tasted. Exactly. That's one example. Or another example would be, you know, you're guided to go to uh, a dance with music you may not be aligned with generally, but you're really guided to go to this dance. And then while you're at the dance, that DJ plays in a way that they you've never heard them play before. Yes. So it's the same thing as going to the kitchen. So it's all the same, you see, like how is it possible that the DJ you're not aligned with, you suddenly became aligned with when you followed guidance exactly. and went to that ecstatic dance? Exactly. Because it's all in the flow of love. However, when you just decide like, hey, I got to dance, I'm feeling nervous today, like, uh, oh, I just want to get out of the house, uh, it's also yeah. okay, but, but the, let's say the results of that is not as um, uh, miraculous, exactly. that's, that's the wrong way to look at it, it's not as uh, resonant or, or joyous as it could be otherwise. So you, you slowly begin to learn through your experience and your growing wisdom, um, how to relax into that flow of love without, as you said, projecting into the space exactly. of what you want. So in my example, I project that I need to move my body, I need to get out of the house or yeah. whatever. That sounds like some kind of anxiety coping. Exactly, and, and it's kind of like, yeah, our mind believes actually that it knows better and it knows better than God knows. And I've had a lot of this, especially at the beginning, you know, the conditioned intuition or something that worked for me before, or, you know, like memories of how something made me feel. So yeah, Kundalini would be um, guiding me one direction. And my mind is like, no, 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 like, actually, I need to do this or yeah, and uh, just so that's great. So basically, the Shakti, Kali, yeah, um, instigates an internal process of uh, differentiating and discerning between 
what is conditioning and what is a movement of the divine in and around you. And you're constantly um, shown by the Shakti, which is which? Exactly. And so it's going on 24 7. 24 7. Brush your teeth, go to sleep, seven. Uh, read this, watch that, go for a walk. Yeah. Uh, what happens on that walk? I'm unlearning all the time, unlearning everything. And Shakti, every day, she shows me, yeah, shows me how to how to better actually operate in the world. So many people think that it's like, oh, like you're just uh, focusing on the spiritual, you're not focusing on like, you know, being human and all these things. It's like, no, Shakti is actually teaching me how to be the most efficient and healthy and vibrant and happy and joyous human that I can possibly be. Home. Home. And how is that, <laughs> uh, how is that manifested into your physical body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so about that <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a big one it's been a huge journey with my body with my health um i already thought i was pretty healthy um i was vegan for five years and yeah it was like i was doing okay but um i still had really low energy and my skin was so dry and all these things I had so many hair thinning hair super thin i would say really really alive and soft i wish I, I could let you touch my skin now um my skin it's unbelievable like i didn't even know that skin can be this soft like even my inner tissue like the, the tissues of my skin like it's completely soft i didn't know it was possible like my coughs completely soft like like baby's coughs and all that just following the guidance and there's been many things that shakti has implemented in my life and of course with tim's guidance as well uh, or shakti's guidance through him to me as i was developing my own connection with kali and shakti and yeah um this energy this <laughs> love <laughs> um yeah so many words for that it's hard to explain yeah just Love the, the feeling. feeling. Just the feeling. And um, so is that uh, yeah, so in terms of um, your tissues are soft, but you can say like uh, you're moving into a lighter state of expression. Yeah. At every level, right? So the emotional, level. mental, spiritual, and physical. Yeah, so energy wise, I have so much more energy. I don't need that much sleep anymore. Shakti wakes me up in the morning feeling vibrant, feeling feeling strong, feeling a lot more flexible in my body, doing crazy asana yoga poses that I could never do before and they come spontaneously, you know, Shakti just suddenly like, you know, puts my arm somewhere, puts my leg somewhere and then puts me in a perfect back bend. My lower back doesn't hurt anymore, it did before. And uh, since we last checked in, you had a pretty huge change and journey, uh, beginning of a Shaktified journey with your throat chakra. Oh yeah, <laughs> another good one, yes. Yeah, so can you share about that? Uh, so... How, how was it before? My throat like, actually has been like a journey since I was a kid. When I was a kid, I had tonsillitis every second week. I was on antibiotics. I was, also had problems speaking, expressing myself. Just felt really, really vulnerable. Also like and there was a shyness. You were the girl that blushed. Yeah, I was blushing all the time. Every time I was approached and people, I got bullied in school and all. It would make things. you mute when you were when you were in this blush. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, my throat was just always really contracted. I started noticing in the past years that yeah, like there's my throat is so contracted. I was also lying a lot. That it was really hard for me to express my truth because I always felt like I'll be judged for it. As well as I always felt like um, yeah, there's so much I actually want to share with the world. I have so much. Yeah, so much I want to speak about and so much I want to express as well as sing. I always had visions of myself singing and every time I had these visions, I was crying because it just and really was spoke voice? to my heart. And But yeah, I had a really hard time to sing. Like every time, just like... I couldn't in, physically sing like, or when it did sing, it sounded like, like, I, a, like a battle. Yeah, it was like I have these beautiful melodies playing in my head, but when I actually open my mouth, like there's so much contraction in my throat that it wasn't coming true the way that it sounds in my mind or in my heart and that was really bothering me 
And now in meditations, like some weeks ago, or maybe more than a month ago, I finally started just spontaneously singing, or Shakti was started singing through me. And first, yeah, it was really, it was a bit dense, and like there was so much healing going on. Like So what, what, what is that like? It's like uh, in meditation, or maybe uh -huh. just being around the house, you find something coming through your being, expressing through your throat and through your, your mouth, and you just relax into that? Yeah, so the energy in this space is very shaktified. <laughs> because, uh, of course, um, what's practiced here is the connection with shakti and being in this divine flow. Um, yeah, so being in the space, being in the field of, um, of you, um, yeah, is um, very nourishing for my shakti. So shakti can actually start to express more easefully through me. Um, as my as my mind is taking a step back as well. Uh, so yes, the spontaneous singing started happening. Of course, in meditations, it's extra strong because all of us participating are in this flow of not doing any willful, willful movement and just being in the strong energy, just allowing Shakti to express, um, yeah, just whatever comes true. Uh, so yeah, first it was just some um, just some light noises, and now it's gone to full on singing for an hour and a half straight. Or singing for the whole day and the singing has uh, gone so many levels like yeah so much improvement so much improvement the starting to actually sound really beautiful sometimes <laughs> and what are you singing when you're singing <laughs> oh ma jay jay ma there is only love Va -ma. there is only love Kali. Mm -hmm. i sing about love Mostly I just sing that there's only love and it's just kept happening spontaneously. Um, I am love. And I am love. One being, one light I am. Permitting all of the existence. That's coming true a lot. And um, Isn't it amazing how <laughs> this uh, love flowing through the throat chakra expresses itself in such an amazingly high vibration that it's almost like a a reminder that the rest of us can align with that yeah and uh, you know you say I am love or all you need is love or everything is love yeah I found myself saying similar things <laughs> um, yes. and then like the mind has to get it eventually you know the yeah, mind is exactly. like questioning is that true or yeah. whatever but after seeing it one million times yeah you know it has an effect on the whole field exactly and so the throat is exactly. like uh, saturating your being with vibrations exactly. of love exactly. coming from the divine yeah. and not just you because my experience in, in the meditations uh, on this journey in the last yeah since my throat, ch throat chakra began to open is that whatever coming through this throat when I'm with others is part of the transmission a strong yeah. part of the transmission exactly. and not only is it bathing my being in these divine loving vibrations but everyone else who is in the the field and uh, um, I realized this early on in my throat chakra journey someone came to me when my throat chakra was just opening and said that my oming was uh, a, a warm blanket or a warm ground where their process could take place so it was like the base of their process and was like nourishing them and supporting them. Yeah. So I was like, wow, because that's what it felt like to me internally as well. And uh, here we are years later, and that's a big part of what's transmitted and what's shared is coming through the, the throat chakra and not just as music and song uh, and toning and light language, but also as uh, satsang. Yes, as well as um, different beings actually singing and speaking through us. That's a big yeah. one to mention as well. Yeah, so that's another <laughs> interesting thing with the throat chakra is, uh, you know, who's speaking? And um, so I just want to put everything that the kind of new age world about sovereignty and all that stuff aside for a moment. <laughs> uh. We can just take that and put it over here. Um, and that when you're in the flow of love, there's no question about sovereignty. Or who's speaking? There's no one of this, like um, suspicion, or uh, withholding, or mindiness about yeah. who or what this is. 
because it's so obvious, uh, even to the mind, that this is the flow of love, this is grace. Yeah. Grace flowing through the throat, and therefore, like, identifying or questioning. I hear some people say, like, they, you should question, you know, who's appearing or what's appearing in your meditations. Well, a lot of the times, these beings self-identify. Yeah. It's just obvious who it is. And when you have a, someone else who's also attuned um, meditating with you, then it's it's quite easy to discern uh, what being is present. But it's not out of a suspicion. It's like just out of uh, acknowledging the frequency exactly. that's present. So when you become really open and your throat's really open, your heart's really open, your crown's where your being's really open, your whole field is open, and you're in alignment, uh, yeah, different beings not only speak through you, but actually... Uh, fully embody you exactly yeah and it's the most beautiful experience but, and because we are in such high frequency of course like the beings we connect with are the most high frequent frequency beings so there's angels that connect with us and different indian deities like krishna and kali and hanuman yeah there's a lot that come true and of course there's just so they're just pure light and pure love yeah. themselves and having that light and love enter our bodies is creating such a healing effect and so much pleasure and joy and love and and yeah and after that kind of meditations of course like it's very impactful because it helps us actually realize the love and joy that we are and yeah the divinity of this whole existence this plane this yeah so, how everything everything is love like we sing mm. it's it's all love. And, I mean, yeah. it's so, I, I find it so, um, yeah, celebratory. So yeah. when these beings, um, I would say, we're all aspects of, of the one, of the one being, of the one light. So I, there's no difference between over here and Krishna. Yes. Or over here and Kali. And I feel like when these um, aspects of the one, of, I, of which I am as well, um, join uh, it's in celebration so it's not it's not a teaching like a mindy teaching yeah. about anything if there are teachings it's uh, usually very simple and through song even rather than something you have to like figure out or analyze um. and um, very, very often through like um, songs that have been in my journey uh, throughout my life. So the, uh, the Kundalini uh, loves to communicate through Beatles songs. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. It's just so much joy, you yeah. know? There's no seriousness in like this whole process. Yeah. Or even like today we were listening to like Judy Garland um, um, and we were listening to Louis Armstrong and just yeah. to seeing that when these music comes through, um, you see the, the divine joyous nature of these lyrics and these melodies, yeah. uh, which you may have not have understood before. But I feel like this divine intelligence um, is communicating with us all the time through song and songs exactly. that we know and songs that maybe we have some relationship with already. And uh, this morning we were listening to um, Judy Garland and Louis Armstrong, what a wonderful world. And we were both just in tears. In tears, weeping. Uh, yeah, weeping, <laughs> because it's like a lis listening to like a heavenly mass, yeah. you know, at the church. It's no different. Yeah, exactly. And you know, because it's not our mind choosing the music, it's always Ma. Yeah. Even like, even the mind has resistance to the music. Like that's corny. It's like what like, that doesn't even. I heard that last week. Exactly. Typical mind. Talk. But yeah, Ma always chooses the right music. Yeah. Suited in the moment. Yeah. Even sometimes the music comes in and it's like bizarrely um, uh, different than what had been playing before. Like and house music. Yeah, like suddenly <laughs> house music, you know, or suddenly. Yeah. Um, you know, something that might be a little like, yeah, dark techno, but it's, it's filled with light. Yeah, it's always it, on point. <laughs> it's the same thing about the going to the, the kitchen. So the guidance is play mm. this music or be open to let this come through you. And, or both at the same time, usually. Yeah. And then it does, and you see that even this like dark club music 
is filled with light. Yes. But why is that? Because it's the same reason why the dish you prepared in the kitchen is filled with light. Exactly. It's the guide, the guidance, the act of being guided, the choice, and the manifestation are all love. Yeah. So of course, the, what you thought before was like dark techno is now, again, the heavenly choir. And it's such a great example of Tantra, right? That's, that's what it is, is like the non-duality. Like, oh, you mean the dark techno is also light? Yeah, and exactly. enjoyable as light. And uh, you can still be in tears. You're in tears yeah. at a wonderful world and at the dark techno. Exactly. And yeah, that's, that's it about the conditioned intuition. And yeah, what is what? It's actually only just surrendering to the flow of love and surrendering to each moment and not having any conditionings. And, so we can yeah. say like, um, you know, the choices, if we, if we have free will or choices or uh, something like that, you know, the choice is the Luciferian choice, which is I am the doer, I am yeah. the creator, uh, my will is the most important thing, exactly. uh, I know best, um, uh, I, 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 yes, or you yes, can yes. become the cr clear crystal of yes, divine yes, love. Yes, yes, wow. So mm. that's the choice. You know, exactly. do you want to completely empty yourself of all conditioning, programming, fears, attachments, uh, anything like that? Because all those things inhibit the flow of love. Yeah. Or do you want it to be all about your views, your will, your opinions, your memories, your, your goals, your desires, and operate from there? Exactly. And I would say that's the Luciferian temptation. Yes. Because, um, yeah, you, the, even if we, you know, forget good and bad and all that stuff, we can just say the outcomes, because when you make the dish from your will, because that's what you want, yes. it will not have the same nourishing effect on your field yeah. and on your body as if you surrendered into the flow of love. So why would you not move or surrender into the surrendering of the flow of love as often as possible? Just keep surrendering into that flow of love, identifying it, surrendering into it, identify, surrendering into it. A, a million times, a million times, a million times, even hundreds of times a day. And the more you do that, the more you are that, the more you yeah. remember yourself as that, exactly. the more you allow the divine to manifest through you. So that's the great example also, is like there's so much talk in the New Age circles about manifestation. But again, to me, that's tinged with the Luciferian uh, 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 dilemma. <laughs> yeah, I want Where, whereas, yeah. whereas if, if you allow that everything is manifestation and everything is being manifested quite perfectly without me, thank you very much, my limited mind does not know how manifestation needs to be. Exactly. Because like, think about manifestation, like the sun, the clouds, the plants, the flowers, the other, the other person, like everything is manifesting all the time. Who's gonna walk in through this door at this moment? Will it start raining? You know, like, manifestation is everywhere all the time. And it's only this Luciferian temptation which believes that you can manifest as a quote-unquote co-creator with God versus the path of surrender, which is you allow God to do what God does, exactly. which is to manifest, and you surrender into this joy of manifestation. And you're the gobsmacked, weeping, <laughs> wonderstruck yeah. human at this flow of love. So, you know, what, what sounds appealing to you? What is the program of eternal life and what is the program of death? Exactly. What is the program of stress? What is the program of relaxation? You know, you can just look at these choices and you can see what comes from what is made from what choices are made from scarcity and fears exactly. and what's made from abundance and joy. Um, And how have your, um, yeah, your, your, how is it coming with your relations with others? Are you finding that shifting as well? Yeah, at first I was having some difficulty because I was like, you know, I felt like, oh, it, it feels contracting to speak with this person, you know, or Shakti wasn't guiding me to speak with someone. And my mind was like, yeah, but that's actually really mean. Like, how can I not reply? That's like not nice or something, something. 
but actually when I started to surrender to that I actually started to see how first of all of course I am in not I am not in contraction but secondly also my relationships are improving and those that concern me in this moment are just yeah they're they're just fading away yeah and you know maybe they'll come back when they need to come back but really surrendering to that and really seeing how that actually it does serve the, the highest good and it serves my awakening and and their, and their awakening too because if it's not actually in the flow of love and my mind thinks that oh it needs to be this way then again it's remembering like what who knows better you are god like come on <laughs> and um what, what's going on with your third eye i'm seeing visions all the time all the time all the time and before it was super rare for me like i only got like probably like five visions in my whole life and now i'm getting like dozens of visions every day can you, um, well, first of all, J-Ma, that's so miraculous. So and fun. fun. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> and what kind of visions are you having? Like, what, what, what do you So high vibe. What's so, the actually, I just want to mention the fact that um, maybe a year and a half ago, I had my first vision. And it was at, at a Tantra festival, and I saw a Hindu temple. That was my first visu wow. vision ever. Um, uh, as an aside, when we first met, um, Kika showed me a picture of also a vision of uh, a mountain yes. that you were seeing. And I, uh, no, told me about a mountain she'd seen in a vision. And I showed her a picture of Mount Kailash. And she was like, that's it. Yeah. And if you, those of you who don't know, it's like the one of the most holy uh, mountains for Hindus in the Himalayas, not just Hindus, also for yeah. many people. And uh, that's what she was seeing in her vision. So um, mm. when someone tells you something like that, then you know like hmm, this path seems pretty long. yeah and the more like the more i go forward the more i remember these memories and these little messages already from the past that were always pointing me this direction and with every day i feel more and more aligned with where i am and more aligned with with my dharma with my soul's purpose and oh. feeling just so much love and gratitude to be here i always knew that this is gonna happen I always felt it in my heart and now I just feel so, so grateful because I really feel like I am on my path. I feel so good and I feel so nourished and so safe, like receiving all the guidance from angels and Kali just assuring me that, yeah, they're always by my side and they're never gonna forsake me, forsake me and yeah. But yeah, about this, um, the visions. So that was the first vision and now, uh, and then the mountain and all the visions I had prior to that as well, we're always really holy, it was always monasteries or something like this, really high vibe. And now here, um, I think the first visions I started getting was actually of Kali. I started seeing Kali, beautiful. Um, like all fierce and, and scary looking? <laughs> just so loving actually. Uh, first, actually first when she was coming, she was a little more fierce. She had this like, but actually in a really playful way. So she, she had this big grin on her face and tongue hanging out and like moving around. And like, but so much joy in her eyes. So she kind of looked like very, um, oh little one, oh little one. Like there's some samskara there or like, but like in a very sweet way. Um, so she was always like indi indicating me when there's something light unresolved. And, but light and playful. Exactly. So that's something that, that people, um, yeah, because of the <laughs> iconography fun. and, and uh, the age we're in and the collective projection, yeah. they, uh, and they don't have the experience yeah. that Kali is a uh, uh, frightening, um, uh, scary to some people yeah. uh, emanation, where our experience is that this playful joy and love, not to say that your um, blocks don't come up for review, they do, and Kali serves that function of dissolving everything that doesn't serve and returning you to your divine blueprint, uh, to your God self. But um, so the effect of this fierceness is the same, but the way it's, uh, um, the way it's expressed is playful love and joy. Exactly, yeah. So that started with that, and then I started seeing other deities. I saw Hanuman, and it was such a beautiful, I still remember the image. It was just so perfectly divine. Like no picture on the internet could represent mm. the luminance and the beauty of Hanuman, because it was just like so vibrant, the colors so bright, gold, and wow, it was just 
mm, juicy <laughs> and all the visions there it's like i see the vision and around them there's always like light so they're yeah they, and what what do you when you like for instance the hanuman experience or when you're communing with kali um are they communicating with you or are they just like sharing the field with you or celebrating with you like what's happening you have the vision of hanuman or another um uh deity or being and then what 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 happens then um it's mostly energetic like you feel their presence so, you see them but there's not uh Sometimes it's not, it's not there is purpose of communication. sometimes there is also communication, especially with Kali. I feel like yeah. Kali gives me direct guidance sometimes. Um, Where the sometimes other beings when are I like ask her to with, celebrate, yeah, it really, share, yeah, it really depends. I I feel that every every being has their own unique energy, and they all come for yeah for some reason to bring you something to bring some sort of energy in your being in your field. So yeah, every every being that comes, it brings in yeah, just this different different kind of energy. Um, and are those uh, visions of beings limited to Hinduism? Not at all. It's actually, uh, I'm it's just kind more of and more. Isn't it? Okay, <laughs> so it's all one. Okay, <laughs> and this is what we're learning more and more each day, and dropping all of our conditionings, all our beliefs, all our judgments about anything. You know, we have, yeah, we have the Indian gods coming, we have angels coming, we even have two times we had ayahuasca goddess come, you know, so we could be like, yeah, this is the path, uh, this is the only path, and, you know, plant medicines, or this and this, but yeah, ayahuasca goddess came too, and um, Palladians came, yeah. Palladians came, um, yeah, uh, also, I'm getting visions of uh, animals all the time. Um, seeing foxes and, and deer and these um, yeah animal totems that come to assist me as well and um, so we can say like all creation despite the human propensity to categorize and divide and separate and analyze all creation celebrates your awakening exactly so whether all it's shamanic <laughs> whether it's shamanic or Hindu or Christianity or Judaism or Buddhist whatever those are human labels for um, systems or belief systems or experiences yeah. that are wonderful, but uh, just because you have an affinity towards a certain expression doesn't mean that you're limited to that expression. And that's exactly. so beautiful. It's very hard for the mind to, to get grasp. around, yeah, to grasp. <laughs> but like how can uh, archangels and Kali be present both in your body at the same time, not just in the field, but in your body, where you can literally feel yourself as a um, mashup of yeah. Kali and angelic energy um, expressing uh, in the field and in the body. And the mind is just like, what? Yeah. But but wait a minute, there are no angels in Hinduism, and, and exactly. Kali's not so a Christian. Funny. Like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, and it's just showing us that, you know, it's all one. Yeah. It's all one. It's, it's all, all love, one. and it's all divine. And so this is a great example of how the how Kali, you know, with all her weapons and tools and her intention and her love, is breaking down those barriers. Because you can see, like, the mind will pick up and say, "Well, no, uh, I don't believe in ETs. Well, who are the Palladians? Why are they here?" But they are. Mm. It's uh, obvious, you know. Like many people are experiencing it. So just that reality for you and for everyone who's present uh, breaks so much conditioning and yeah. that's the way Kali is breaking the conditioning exactly. it's in this playful magnificent miraculous joyful so sweet. Uh, so uh, sweet. shocking surprising way that uh, <laughs> bringing you towards one exactly. and now it's like a oneness because we can see it's all related it's a tapestry everything is the vibrations and frequencies but yeah. later on it'll just be the one reality and uh, this is like um, the path to one because the, even you know these, these human distinctions about mm -hmm. how different uh, systems or religions or whatever are, are separate and um, uh, they're not. It, it's all an expression it's all, of the one. Yeah. It's all one. Yeah. Mm. Om. Om.
there is only love. Om Aj Ma Shri Ma, Bhakta A Om Shakti Ma, Hail Mary, full of grace. We are all one. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. <laughs> Jai Ma. Jai Ma. Om Shakti. Thank you so much for joining us, for the sharing. Flow 333. And um, love to you all. Joy to the world. Om Namah Shivaya. Jai Ma Tikali. Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Om. Om.